Hello! So today we'll be talking about the book of Matthew. There's so many books in the New Testament that we could be talking about, but the one that I thought we should really discuss is the book of Matthew. Now, whenever I meet with someone who's not a believer, who is just starting out with learning about Christ and learning how the Bible truly can change our lives, I start them with the book of Matthew. Now, you could start with any book of the Bible, but I believe that we need to start with a strong foundation. And in today's times, I could start you with the Old Testament, I could start you with Revelation, but I think it's really important that you just get a relationship with Christ. And how do you build a relationship? You get to know somebody. You spend some time with that person. And so what we're going to do here today is spend some time with Jesus. All right. So in the book of Matthew, you'll learn that it's written by a tax collector named Matthew. Or some people, depending on which version of the Bible you read, they call him Levi. Now, Matthew was a tax collector, which was equivalent to a sinner. Yes, we are talking about a book of the Bible written by a sinner. So this lets you know that God can use anybody. You know, I remember reading other um, books of the Bible and I'm like, oh my goodness, he used a donkey. Oh my goodness, he used, you know, what Moses who stuttered or he used Aaron who was scared. He used whoever he wants. And so in the book of Matthew, we're going to talk about how God used Matthew to get a point across. Now, when I say we're going to spend some time with Jesus, we're going to get to know him. We're going to get intimate with him. We're going to become one with him because that's the real purpose of this book is to truly understand who Jesus was, who Jesus is, and who Jesus will always be. Okay? Now, so I talk about that the book was written by um, Matthew a tax collector, a sinner. And so we know just right there, when you begin to read it, it talks about how Matthew was sitting there at the temple just collecting taxes, okay? And then he was skimming his part off top because he was a sinner, you know? And so God, Jesus walked up to him and told him, follow me. Matthew didn't ask any questions. Matthew didn't say, hold on, let me collect my belongings. He got up and he followed Jesus. And that's what I want to kind of do here is help you to figure out how you can just leave everything behind and follow Jesus, okay? Now, the reason I want to talk about the book of Matthew is because Matthew was an eyewitness to the work of the Lord, okay? So he's seen firsthand what Jesus did. He, he witnessed the miracles. He witnessed the healing. He witnessed so many things. And I thought this was a really important way for me to speak to you and help you to gain a relationship with Christ and help you to really figure out who Christ was so you can figure out who you are supposed to be. Now, we, we tend to look at Jesus as this historical figure from this book, but really Jesus is still alive on the inside of us. And in order for us to understand that, we have to go through this book and figure out who Jesus was. So when you go through the book of Matthew, it talks about his genealogy and it breaks it all the way down. And so I'm not going to do that because I really want you guys to go and learn about Jesus and where he came from. But it goes through his genealogy, it gets all the way to Mary, okay? So, the birth of Jesus. Jesus is born in a little manger in Bethlehem. There was no space for him to be born in no lavish place. He was born somewhere um, just in a cut, okay? So Jesus never came out to be like, woo, look at me, I'm Jesus. He came out, he came out the womb humble, okay? He came out the womb as someone that was just here because of love, okay? And so we learn about the birth of Jesus. We see how they had to flee to Egypt because Herod wanted to kill him because he knew there was greatness inside of Jesus. And so the book continues to go on about the, the life of Jesus. And then we get to the point where Jesus gets baptized by, the, by John the Baptist, okay? And this is when, you know, the, the Spirit of God descends on Jesus, you know, and, and people really recognize 
okay, this is something, this is a big deal. This guy is a big deal, you know? So they start to realize that Jesus is more than what they thought. So you've got Matthew who's following Jesus around. He's seeing these things that Jesus is doing and he is recording them. Because it's important to understand that Matthew not only recorded these things based off of what he saw, but the things he also recorded were based off of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You have to know that all scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Nobody was just out there right and all welly-nilly. This is something that was inspired by the Holy Spirit and that's what Matthew did. Now, we get to the point where now Jesus has been baptized and he's got some disciples that are following him. And so what happens now? Jesus is beginning to come into the person that God created him to be, all right? So he goes up and is tempted by Satan. How long was he tempted, guys? 40 days and 40 nights. Now, let me just stop right there. Some of us get tempted for like 40 minutes and we give in. We give in. Some people get tempted for four hours and you give in in four days. But Jesus went hard. <laughs> he went hard for 40 days and 40 nights. He said, no, Satan, you will not defeat me. Do you know who my daddy is? And that's what we need to start doing. We need to start telling Satan, do you know who my daddy is? And so I, got, I, I get so excited when I think about how Jesus went through so much in his life to set examples for us. And Matthew shows you a lot of those examples because it's a this book is like a a um a manual of basic Christian living. The book of Matthew spells it out how we should be living as Christians, okay? Now, before we conclude, you know, the life of Jesus by talking about his death and resurrection, I want to talk about some of the things that happened after Jesus was tested by Satan and he did not give in to that temptation. Okay, so this book is highly emphasizing the teachings of Jesus and the miracles of Jesus. So... When you think about this book, a lot of it was to be able to reach the unbelievers, for one, and to set a foundation for them and to also help the believers to have an idea of how they should truly be living as Christians. So I talked about how this book emphasizes the miracles and the teachings of Jesus. So let's just look at a couple of things. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 17, there's just a few things you can look at that Jesus did to show you an example of what you should be doing. So first in Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 17, we'll see how Jesus healed a man with leprosy. Okay, he didn't have to do it. He could have walked right by that man, but the compassion on the inside of, of Jesus caused him to heal the man with leprosy. If you go a little further, you see how a centurion man comes up to Jesus. Now this centurion, he's a, he's a soldier. He's a man of authority. And he comes to Jesus and says, I need you to heal one of my servants, okay? And now Jesus was gonna go to him. But listen at this, listen at the level of faith that this centurion man had. He says, I know authority. I'm a man of authority. I recognize authority. All you gotta do is say the word and it will happen. So he believed. He wasn't even a Jew, but he understood the power that was on the inside of Jesus. And he said, you don't have to come. You don't have to come lay hands on them. All you got to do is say the word. And so Jesus said the word. Jesus said the word and that servant was healed. 
And that's the kind of things that we have to think about. When people tell us that are unbelievers, oh, my head hurt. All we got to do is say the word. We get too caught up in religion and tradition. Oh, let me go get my oil. Now you done, you done stop this person who has a headache. Wait right here. You run away. You go get your oil. You slather it all up. And you lay hands on that person. Sometimes you ain't got time for all that. And this centurion so, soldier recognized that. And Jesus recognized it. And Jesus didn't say, oh, I got to go get my oil first. You never see where Jesus stopped to get oil first and lather all up before he laid hands on you. Or before he gave you the word to take up your bed and walk. You just heard Jesus say the word and it was so. And this centurion soldier recognized that all he needed was for Jesus to say the word and it would be so. Okay, so you go a little further in chapter 8, and there is the, the demon-possessed people. Well, what do we know about Jesus? We know that he's a healer. We know that he is a man who operates according to our faith, and we know that he is one who can cast out demons. So you've got these demon-possessed people and these, these people who are sick, and, and all these people who come up to Jesus after they see what he's done, you know, because they're, they're witnessing him and they're following him, and they're seeing all these miracles that are going forth everywhere that Jesus went. I'm saying everywhere that Jesus went, he did a miracle. Everywhere that Jesus went, he demonstrated the kingdom of God, what the kingdom of God was all about. He did not go places merely to sit there and have a drink or merely to go and enjoy himself. He was always about his father's business. So we get to the point where there's the demon-possessed people and Jesus delivers them. He casts out the demons. And all throughout scripture in the New Testament, you'll see where there are demons, and, and especially in um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you'll see when Jesus are, is casting out demons. You'll see when demons are afraid, like, no, why are you here? Because they're freaking out. Like, why are you here, Jesus? Are you here to torment me? This is what the demons were saying to Jesus. These demons knew who he was. They recognized that power. And you know what's so exciting? That power is on the inside of us. That power is on the inside of you. Now listen, you might think I'm a little crazy here, but what? I can cast out demons. I can heal the sick. I can raise the dead. Yes, you can. You can do that. You have that power on the inside of you. Jesus died specifically so that you could do those things. He died because he loved you. He, his original intent was to unify us again, to bring us back to God's original intent. Okay, so that's why Jesus was here, and that's why he walked the earth, and that's why he demonstrated those things for us, and then that's why he died and was resurrected and ascended to heaven, okay? So we're talking about a God who is so amazing that he sent his only son for us. And Jesus, the story is depicted in Matthew, how Jesus came, he walked the earth, he taught us some things, he died for our sins, he rose again, and then he taught us some stuff before he ascended to heaven. Talk about an awesome God. He ain't just leave us. He came back, gave us some more, and then he left. Now, um, as I mentioned before, you know, Jesus um, picked Matthew, a sinner, because Jesus extends his love to all. He extends his love to all because this is the basis of Christian culture. This is true Christian culture. If you're not sure what a Christian is, it's one who is Christ-like. So to be like Christ, you have to exemplify Christ. You have to have the nature of Christ. You have to know Christ in order to do the same things that Christ did. Okay? So Christ was one who uh, healed he was one who delivered. He fed people. He gave people something to drink. He gave them the word. He gave them moral teachings. Jesus was awesome. He gave and gave and gave despite what we gave him. And all of this was to help people to recognize a lifestyle that they were supposed to be living so that we have the ability to call people to follow Jesus. You can't call people to follow Jesus if you don't have some power on the inside of you. Because nowadays, people are looking for power. People are searching everywhere for power. You are finding so many people who are just 
doing this and that type of religion or into this type of studies because they want power. And we, the church, have the ability to teach them about that power. And that's why I always said I start with the book of Matthew because it's power packed. It's full of power. You see Jesus doing so many things traveling to so many places, Jesus was always on the move to teach somewhere, to preach somewhere, to heal somebody, to deliver somebody. He was busy, okay? And he, when he taught, he taught in parables. Because see, Jesus didn't want to make it so simple that you give up on him. He wanted to give you something to think about. And so he taught in parables and, and, and he gave you these moral teachings everywhere he went. Jesus traveled from here to there to there to there and he was teaching us. He was teaching the people. He was stopping in synagogue after synagogue to teach on the foundations of the kingdom of God. And I love that because these are things that we should be doing as believers also. We should be sharing the teachings of Jesus. We should be demonstrating the kingdom of God by walking in signs, wonders, and miracles. The Bible says that we should heal the sick and raise the dead and cast out demons. And these are all things that Jesus did. said this is how you be a Christian he never went in there and said this is how you gotta demonstrate how, how Christ did things he only went in there talking about his father's business which was demonstrating the kingdom of God advancing the kingdom of God building the kingdom of God he wanted to bring more souls into the kingdom of God he wanted to impart himself on the inside of us so that we could hear from him you ever hear that still small voice and you wonder hmm, I don't know what made me think that and then you go do something wonderful for somebody that's not you that's God on the inside of you that's the Holy Spirit that Jesus left for us the comforter our guide he left that Holy Spirit for you okay and so if you just kind of read about some of the moral teachings that Jesus did um, I love how he goes through different aspects of life. He touches on a different part of life every time. Here are just a few of the things that he talked about. So ultimately, what I'm trying to tell you, the book of Matthew is a, is a manual to teach you how to live the Christian culture to teach you how to live according to what Jesus did. You ever hear people or see the little bracelets that people wear that says, what would Jesus do? That's what the book of Matthew is all about. To teach you what would Jesus do and teach you how to do those things. And all of that comes from allowing the power on the inside of you that everyone's searching for that's right there already. It's already on the inside of you. You just have to learn how to tap into that power on the inside of you. And I love how Jesus spoke in parables so much. And one of the ones that I want to end with is the parable um, that he talks about the, the narrow and wide way. And see, the book of Matthew, we have two options. We have two options of our lifestyle. We can follow the wide road, which leads to destruction, okay? That's the road that makes things seem so easy. You have so many different routes. Or, <coughs> you can follow the narrow road. Now, the narrow road might be hard. The narrow road might seem like it's so much more work. The narrow road might seem undesirable at times because of persecution and, and the things that, the opposition that you'll go through. But the narrow road is how you get to that power of God. The narrow road is how you have the, uh, the narrow road is how you can exemplify the true power of God. It's how you can walk and demonstrate that power. How you can walk and demonstrate signs and wonders and miracles. It says that those signs, wonders, and miracles should follow all who believe. 
So if you believe in Jesus, if you believe in the kingdom of God, read this book of Matthew. Get acquainted with our Lord. Get to know him. Get intimate with him. Begin to learn all about him. Write notes. I encourage you to, that as you read through Matthew, write down all the descriptions of Jesus. Write them down. And then see how many of those characteristics do you have. Okay? It will blow your mind when you start reading about who Jesus is and the traits that he had. And you compare yourself. It'll totally put you on the right road, which is the narrow road, and you'll be on your way.